somewhere out there, on the outskirts of the solar system, there's a very peculiar object, technically a dwarf planet, known as Makemake. We don't really know exactly what it looks like, but it's probably something like this. Although we do know that compared to other dwarf planets, it seems to be just a little bit more red. The result of interactions between methane on the surface of Makemake, along with other carbon-containing compounds, and the reactions from ultraviolet light and cosmic ray radiation, which actually results in something known as tollings, and these tollings make things extremely dark red in outer space. But the thing is, because of recent observations from the James Webb Space Telescope, researchers have actually started making some really unusual and unexpected discoveries coming from several of these dwarf planets, but specifically Makemake. And today we're going to discuss one of these discoveries that was just discussed in the paper in the description that essentially confirms some of the speculations from before. A lot of these worlds seem to be ocean worlds, and many of them are still geologically active even today. And that means there's maybe a slight chance that many of them might contain life. And so, hello info person, this is Anton, let's discuss some of these new discoveries, but first let's do a bit of a review from a previous discovery that was announced back in February of 2024. Here this was a James Webb observation of Ares and Makemake, which might appear different, turn out to be extremely similar in one important feature. As the study by Christopher Glein and his team revealed, Based on observations of types of methane on the surface of these objects, which were visible to the James Webb Space Telescope, it became apparent that the only way this type of methane could be produced was if basically it came from within these objects. Or just to rephrase this, it was evidence for some kind of a cryovolcanic activity, possibly geologic activity, that would bring up some of the stuff from within these objects and then deposit it on the surface. So kind of similar to what's happening on Enceladus, where there's a lot of cryovolcanism, and a lot of materials end up on the surface afterwards. But obviously here there was maybe one difference. The difference is that these objects were super far away from the Sun, and moreover, were not actually orbiting anything massive. For objects like Enceladus and for other objects that potentially contain liquid oceans, since they orbit giant planets, and since they do have a lot of partners and quite a lot of neighbors, there's a lot of tidal activity that can actually give them energy to then produce these volcanoes. That's of course how, for example, volcanoes on Io are powered as well. Yet Makemake is basically farther away from the Sun than Pluto and only has a tiny moon in its orbit that's extremely unlikely to be able to produce any of these effects. Eris is even farther away and does not seem to have any moons. So the question is, what's happening and how is this possible? And so if you'd like to learn more details, the video in the description talks a little bit more about this, but in a nutshell, it was basically assumed that these objects very likely had substantial rocky cores that at some point, and possibly even today, produce radiogenic heating, which is exactly what's happening inside Earth as well. And because of this heating, they would thus have much warmer insides, resulting in massive oceans within them, and also resulting in the production of various carbon molecules, including specific types of methane. Which by itself was an intriguing discovery and an intriguing explanation. But now, just a few months later, we actually got a new observation and even further analysis, this time coming from a study by Sabakis and a team from Europe that observed Makemake by using mid-infrared frequencies. And to their surprise, they actually found an excess of heat coming from Makemake, suggesting temperatures of about 150 Kelvin, which sort of made no sense. Or I guess let's rephrase this. Because of the distances, here Makemake is expected to be only 40 Kelvin on the surface, yet James Webb was able to see hotspots at least 110 degrees warmer, which could not have been produced by any kind of a solar emission or even any collision, except for maybe two things. Here, the first explanation suggests that maybe the subject contains a relatively small ring filled with carbonaceous dust grains, once again kind of similar to what we actually observe around Enceladus. There's actually this gorgeous shot from the Cassini mission that shows us how all of this dust produces E-ring around Saturn. And so this dust could possibly produce these temperatures. There is maybe one problem though. First of all, it's actually unknown where it came from, and second of all, previous observations from 2011, when there was a star occultation that allowed researchers to actually see what's happening close to Makemake, did not reveal any additional rings. 
Although technically here they were looking for the atmosphere, which was also not discovered either. And so if the occultation did not see the rings, obviously the rings could have been really small, or this heat could also be formed in a different way. And specifically, these heat spots could be actually showing us a continuous eruption, very likely powered by some kind of a subsurface heat, and in this case, very likely covering at least 1% of the surface of Make Make. In other words, one of the better explanations for this unusual hotspot is of course cryovolcanoes, very very similar to what we've seen many times around other objects in the solar system. And if so, this would actually explain both the presence of methane, the presence of additional particles that could be producing some of these emissions, and might even explain any kind of a tiny ring that could be discovered at some point. In other words, this is essentially the first evidence we have for active geologic activity, or for some kind of an activity extremely far away from the sun around the object that does not actually have anything massive around it. No major planet, no major partner that can actually do any of this, and the object that's at least four and a half billion years old. So in other words, it looks like Makemake potentially stayed geologically active for an extremely long period of time. And if correct, and if confirmed, this is obviously a huge discovery. It potentially suggests that many of these objects contain vast underground oceans, many of them contain organic molecules, potentially giving life a huge chance to start anywhere, and more importantly, this discovery rebukes previous assumptions that suggested distant objects would be completely uninhabitable. Here, if this is confirmed, and if this is indeed cryovolcanism, it does imply Makemake and a lot of other objects, a lot of other dwarf planets, could indeed be hiding life somewhere inside. Although obviously if this is just the rings and not cryovolcanoes, it would point at an additional phenomenon we don't really understand, suggesting that trans-Neptunian objects potentially have a lot of other geological effects we barely understand. But trying to study this more, or trying to understand this, is going to be really challenging, mostly because Makemake is super far away, and nobody is really planning any missions there anytime soon. But there's maybe one way to study this without going there directly, and that's by comparing it to an object that we have studied very well, Ceres. Now there's still a bit of a debate about where exactly Ceres came from, and specifically where exactly it was formed, because it's actually very different from all of the other asteroids in the asteroid belt, but right now there is an assumption that maybe Ceres was also created in a very similar location to Makemake and Pluto, and eventually somehow got transferred to the asteroid belt. And as you might know, Ceres was one of the worlds that NASA studied extremely thoroughly with the mission known as Dawn. And here we also discovered ammonium-rich deposits, and also signs of ancient cryovolcanism as well. For example, there are a lot of unusual white soil deposits discovered around different craters, with their origin pointing at ancient cryovolcanism. But here it potentially ended millions of years ago, possibly even over 100 million years ago, at least the larger cryovolcanoes like Ahuna Mons. Nevertheless, discoveries from Ceres point at the geologically active world with various mountains, domes, fractures, and a lot of other unusual objects, all indicating that something within Ceres was producing heat that would then be released on the surface. And there are also signs of potentially ancient ocean that now might no longer exist, but it could have existed for billions of years. And so because Ceres seems to show signs of water flow and the presence of a lot of different complex molecules on the surface, Assuming that it came from a similar region to Pluto, Makemake, and Ares, we can kind of speculate that maybe they actually have very similar geological activity inside, and maybe they all, at some point, hosted an ocean world. A world filled with a lot of organic molecules, but obviously trapped by all of the ice on the surface. And though now the speculations about Ceres basically suggest that it might still have some liquid water inside, but just trapped in much smaller pockets, no longer a large global ocean, for objects like Makemake, since it is more massive and thus potentially contains a larger core, it could imply that it's still active even today and might thus still be able to support life. And so here the idea is that by studying Ceres, we might be able to figure out what's actually happening on Makemake and other dwarf planets like Pluto as well. But it will probably take years before we can actually come to any conclusions. And the best way to have any of these conclusions is to maybe organize some kind of a different mission, kind of similar to the New Horizons, but this time, possibly, placing an actual probe on the surface of these dwarf planets in order to figure out what's on the surface 
and what's inside. But that's obviously wishful thinking. Right now there's no talk or even suggestion of talks about such a mission, and so for at least another decade we're definitely unlikely to know more. But nevertheless, these new discoveries from the James Webb definitely point at something super exciting and obviously point at potential signs of habitable conditions inside these objects. And since both Pluto and Aries are obviously much larger and more massive in size, these larger dwarf planets might be even more exciting. And much more importantly, in the last few years, researchers have also discovered a much larger number of trans-Neptunian objects out there, basically suggesting that the Kuiper's belt could be a lot more mysterious than we ever thought. You can learn about this discovery in one of the videos in the description. And so once there are some more news or additional discoveries about these objects, we'll come back and discuss this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.